Hello, and welcome to the video version of the Left of Greg podcast. I'm Brian Marin, the host and creator of the show. As always, I will be joined by human behavior expert, Mr. Greg Williams, who the show is affectionately named after. On the show, we discuss different topics through the lenses of what we call human behavior pattern recognition and analysis. If you'd like to find out more about what that is, please check the links in the episode details and go to our website to learn more. Please don't forget to follow us on social media. The links are also in the episode details and hit the like and subscribe button to help support our work. Thanks for tuning in and we hope you enjoy the show. All right. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, Brian Marin. So today we are going to be talking about a, a conversation um, about kind of liability and who's at fault, who's responsible the, uh, in a number of different cases. But this conversation kind of started from a, a story you shared with me about a Oregon or Oregon State Police trooper uh, got into a shootout with a suspect, was shot like 12 times, um, has some permanent disabilities, all kinds of other stuff, you know, in horrible situation, right? Uh, he was in a pursuit with them. Guy ended up getting out, shooting, shooting out with him. He shot him back. So, but what he ended up doing afterwards is he filed a $30 million lawsuit against his own police agency and basically saying that the dispatchers failed to alert him that this suspect was armed, suicidal, and just shot his wife. And so he was saying, basically, they, they, they are liable for not, he would not, what he said, so I just want to get it, get it clear that he lacked, what he said was he lacked critical information when he made the tactical, tactical decision to chase the suspect. And he said he would not have otherwise made that decision and was therefore exposed and subjected to unanticipated lethal attack and suffered critical life-threatening, permanently disabling industry, uh, in injuries. Excuse me. Basically, he's saying they withheld information, which caused him to make a decision that he otherwise would not have made had they given the information. Uh, yeah. That suit eventually got thrown out um because uh i think i can't remember what the what they said but they concluded that they didn't intentionally withhold information from him right so so that's kind of just the case real quick we're going to talk about a whole bunch of other ones and who's liable and where it comes from but this is what spurred the conversation because it's it's an interesting one and it's not the first time that one police officers have sued their own agencies that happens all the time for a number of different issues. I was passed over for, for promotion because of this, or someone ruined my career because they said this. That happens a, a lot, actually. A, a law enforcement officer suing their their own agency because it's become you know we're a litigious society. But but in, in I don't want to. I'm not trying to you know disregard any merits of any of these cases. It's actually. It's the only way really things change, uh, especially yes. with courts, uh, law enforcement, the judicial system. It's it's from lawsuits. That's how our legal system is set up. So it's not, you know, retribution. We don't we're, we're not doing the lynch mob and I'm going to kill you because you did this. It's it's through lawsuits and and that yep. that then informs and changes policy over time. And so there's a, a you know especially when it comes to liability because you have personal liability but you're working for the city or metropolitan government state whatever it is whatever government you're working for you're working for the state so there's certain things that that um they are liable for as a whole meaning the state as a whole that we pay our taxes to and you have some um liability but but only you, you, you then you have something called qualified immunity where you're immune, you're immune from some different liability if you are consistent with what you were trained to do meaning you don't step outside of or, of what you were trained to do and there's these are all um things that are in flux we'll say that greg right uh right. there is that there's yes there's there's standards within different case law but all of these things are constantly in flux based on new and incoming cases based on new laws based on new training exactly. policies all that stuff. So it's constantly changing, constantly changing as it should. It's adapting yep. to new issues, new threats, uh, new exactly. societal concerns, all that stuff. So just kind of big picture legal stuff. You know, this is this. Do you, do, is there anything you want to kind of add up to the beginning? No, I, I, I just want to talk. I, I want to talk about what you just said in the context of this case, only to open the door to, to other cases I okay. think we'll discuss today. Yeah. And, and I, I think that you got to understand that police uh, investigation was done improperly is the number one thing that people quote all the time, whether it's the cops, yes. whether it's a property room, whether it's a, yeah. a, a, a civilian, whether it's a homicide, doesn't matter. But let's, and, and, and as a matter of fact, I, I, I remember that the uh, uh, Bruno Richard Hauptman, uh, the, the guy that stole and, and murdered the Lindbergh baby back in the thirties. I remember that case, like it was yesterday, Brian. And the same thing was, oh, it was shoddy police work. 
dude, the wood from the fucking ladder, pardon me, in your attic came from a very specific source and the layout yeah. was, a, I mean, it was overwhelming. So this is an overwhelming case. And this is the kind of case I really like. The, the reason I like the, the uh, Nick Cedarberg is the, the uh, state trooper. The reason I like this is he's a together guy. He was a good copper. He's got a wife or now wife, but then was his uh, 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 girlfriend, fiance kind of thing. She was also an Oregon state trooper, had nothing to do with this case, of course. Uh, 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 James Tilka uh, going through some really bad stuff, had a bad history. He's the decedent, the shooter. Uh, but then, Brian, this is the type of case that I thought this would be great for resilience. Why? Because Tilka on Christmas Eve goes and buys a gun, buys extra magazines, buy more ammo. Okay. Uh, you're having domestic trouble. Okay. Shows up unannounced to drop off his 11 month old, uh, you hear what I'm trying to say, at the uh, uh, parents' house. You know what I'm saying? Okay, everything is pointing to this is going to have a bad ending. So ends up shooting his wife dead in the driveway, flees, uh, 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 copper goes after him. Now, everything that happens after that is is on record. Go do your homework. Take a look at the case. But the uh, uh, suspect driving down a dead-end street, doing the flip, accelerating. Listen, Brian, Stevie Wonder called. Okay, you're yeah. in a dangerous profession, right? And and remember, you choose the profession, but also simple things like this that coppers know, and I think you know as well, very very intimately. Uh, uh, this is Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Okay, yep. so so why is a copper working? There's only two reasons a copper's working on that. He's brand new and he got stiffed by the other people pulling, you know, shift in his car, or you get double time and a half. Yeah, you get what I'm trying to say, and you want to be out there working. The other thing is to quote the famous Tommy Nelson, God bless you, Tommy, wherever you are. Uh, if you're scared, just don't go. Uh, and, and I'm not bagging on, on Nick Cederberg because I wanted him to be the, the center of a thing about resilience, Brian, because he got shot 12 times and he lived. You, yeah. you see what I'm trying to say? Right. He pulled through. It's horrible. But what I'm trying to say here is, Brian, basics of the case are that everybody but me did something wrong. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Dispatchers didn't tell me the full story. Uh, 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 Tilka's the real shooter here. Let's remember that hospital didn't do the right, uh, you yeah, know, yeah. He, he, so he had said, uh, like, there, there's a few other things yeah. he had said in the hospital. Uh, uh, this guy was admitted or he what should have been admitted on some type of psychiatric right. hold weeks prior to that, that the doctor didn't do it. So now they're liable for yep. this. So it's just another thing yep. I just want to make sure. So, no, no, no. And, and law, lawsuit is ongoing. Yes, so that one out is. of the $30 million lawsuit. The one against the hospital has been dismissed. The one against dispatch has been dismissed. You get what I'm trying to say? And now there's just pieces laying on the table. Pieces of a broken life. Pieces of Nick Cedarberg's broken life. You get yes. what I'm trying to say? That's my perspective on this one. One, uh, uh, shout out to all LE first responders, anybody that's out there doing dangerous work, oil rig workers, airplane pilots, right? Shout out to all of you. And, and the thing is that every once in a while, one of you gets hurt and your life is left in a shambles. And on this one, the proximate cause of all these injuries is James Tilka, nobody else. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And, and so, Brian, I think the further we get away from that, the more we allow, and I don't want to say frivolous because you said it succinctly, lawsuits are how we get things done, yeah? Yeah. Lawsuits are how we have it, to change it, it policy. But, yeah. but this one, uh, uh, I think going after everybody, I think it's Occam's razor, Brian. The simplest solution is probably the solution that we need to go for here. And James Tilka is responsible, not everybody else that was uh, vicariously working on Christmas in 2016. Does that make and, sense? Yeah, and and this this goes into I I, I get I get where you're coming from, and yeah. I, I see your point on this this because this goes into the greater discussion what we're talking about of who's liable right for something right. like this right because now if you're found to and and let's go back because just because I, I I you know. Canton v. Harris, okay, yep. uh, uh, established. Perfect. This was this was in the '80s, and it was a woman who was detained by the Canton police. Brought her in, didn't give her any type of medical treatment. They said there was something odd or something going on with her. Um, you know, they basically then she got released. Her family then had to get her medical treatment. Found out she had, you know needed all this therapy. Is emotionally disturbed. I didn't get too too much in the details about this, but basically what happened was they then sued. Um, it went all the way up to the Supreme Court. And one of the things is that what they found is there are, the, this is the Supreme Court ruled that the, this kind of what became known as sort of the failure to train theory, right? Yep. And said the inadequacy of police training may serve as the basis for liability only where the failure to train amounts to deliberate indifference to the rights of the person whom the police come in contact with. So now they, in this case, they said, wait a minute. Police agencies do need to be liable, right? If your train, your lack of training 
but they clarified it and said amounts to deliberate indifference to the rights of the persons. And then it was, they clearly articulated it, you know, um, and I just want to kind of read some of the footnotes from that yeah, case. because it's, it's, it's important. And it talks about what you can and can't sue against and how litigation works. But what they said, you know, uh, I'll read from it. it said, for example, city policy policymakers uh, know to a moral certainty that their police officers will be required to arrest fleeing felons the city has armed its officers with firearms in part to allow them to accomplish this task. Thus, the need to train officers in the constitutional limitations on the use of deadly force, see Tennessee v. Gardner, can be said to be so obvious that the failure to do so could properly be characterized as deliberate indifference. So they referenced Tennessee v. Gardner, which we've talked about yes. before, which talks about fleeing, fen- uh, fleeing felons to show deliberate indifference. And then they said basically that in general, the record must contain sufficient evidence to establish a violation of federally protected right inadequate training of employees and causation between inadequate training and the plaintiff's injury. Now, this had to do with basically citizens suing a, a police agency, yes. but that starts uh, the, that holds them a little bit li- liable. There's different types of liability. There's vicarious liability. There's this, what they're, what the Supreme court says, there must be, you know, willful sort of uh, indifference to someone's rights. So the idea that was from the perspective of uh, the, the, plaintiff was suing the police officer or suing the police department they were a citizen they weren't an employee but it falls in line with would that be the next step police officers suing police agency but that does happen all the time and in terms of this case where what this guy is basically saying he was saying withholding of information but our discussion then uh said the officer in oregon but you know our our, our discussion led into the failure to train. And so there is Precisely. legal precedent to where they can be held liable if it's considered a failure to train appropriately, which, which is what we typically find in all these different cases, right? Uh, when police officers get killed, you know, uh, you look at the, the big one was that changed training a lot was the, the uh, bank shootout in, um, in, in at Los Angeles uh, yep. back in the 90s, right? Where the, all of a sudden police officers didn't even have the right firepower or equipment to deal with this type of threat. And the whole nation went, oh my God, we're not training them to a standard to this threat that we now have. So they assumed responsibility by changing the training, adding more in, getting different weapons. So, so there's a, it, it opens up a, a whole panoply of different things that occur, but yes, they, they, there's the, my, my thing was, well, if to specifically to the case we're talking about, was he trained to handle that type of a threat? Was he trained for that job? Cause you brought up the point, which most people are going to make is you chose that profession. I mean, I've been in those shoes before, right? Where I chose that path and then I got there and then all of a sudden things went catastrophically wrong. And I went, oh shit, uh, I'm in over my head. This is, uh, be careful what you wish for because you just might get it, but had to fight our way out of a really bad situation. That was with the Marine Corps deployed. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it was yeah. what, what we were facing exceeded what we were trained, not the necessarily the standard we were trained to, but what, what and how we trained for was very different than what we got on the ground. Now, Obviously, I didn't want to sue the Marine Corps, even though you, you can't, but but the idea is the same as who's liable, who's responsible for that, and then specifically with police work, because that does fall on the agency, which falls on the city, which falls on our standards, which falls on society as a whole, because that falls into funding. Like, you can, once you start down this path, you know, you can include a lot of people who might be in some way vicariously liable or responsible for that. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, uh, I, just want, I just want to start with a little bit of the case history with, with the Supreme Court, what they said, and then kind of apply that to the larger discussion as a whole about who who's liable, Greg. I mean, does does this officer have a case there saying I wasn't trained to handle this situation? Yeah. So let's go back. Let's let's uh, uh, and your your everything that you said is indisputable. I'm a, I'm a little all over the place this morning. Yeah. Sorry. Well, let's but, uh, so let me give, let me give some structure to your argument. Yeah. So right now, last week, there are two officers that are in a trick bag. Look it up folks. Again, do your research because during a transport, a person that they had in the back for a liquor hold, who was too drunk to take care of himself. And all they were going to do is take him to the detox yeah. uh, died in their custody. Okay. So they were the ones that picked him up and put him in a van and drove him. Now, their defense and the defense of the, the prosecutors charging them with a, 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 a manslaughter uh, uh, charge, which is really way up there, yeah. uh, not negligence, you not, know what yeah. I'm saying? And, and so the, the answer is that, hey, listen, we weren't trained on this. And then a prosecutor comes back and uses your argument and says, 
you know, you knew or should have known better. You've been driving this van for a while. People drive vans. Don't give me any crap. Okay, so this is the balance. So let's go to uh, uh, transport. Well, uh, uh, you just uh, did Canton v. Harris. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Okay, which is in its biggest overarching is based on not being able to take a look at a person and determine there's something else going on. They're not right. just not wanting to go, Brian. Right. So there's a medical emergency. And I would say that you go uh, a little bit further forward. I could give you a litany of traffic stop cases where the, the one the guy runs in, tries to, to uh, get something at 7-Eleven, comes out. What it is, is he's having a, a diabetic uh, seizure yeah, and he's that, trying to get the orange the juice. Orange and he juice. Gets yeah. Right. But that case in its uh, case in chief has been acted out on city streets for 100 years. As long as there's been cops and motor vehicles, there's been that kind of case. And the Supreme Court only reaches down and cherry picks one that's very uh, strong. You it, see what I'm yeah, absolutely. I need to make sure that there's a, a compelling case here so everybody gets my point. Now, I want to compare that to Jaido. Jaido and I, uh, the joint IED defeat organization, it's undergone a number of names, but uh, uh, back when JFCOM was still a thing, Joint Forces Command, uh, uh, my biggest bitch, and I'm nobody, I'm nothing, I'm just a, a person, was that when I would go into a classroom, we couldn't get a Proxima, but there were 19 different uh, AT4 fully functional things yeah, that you could trainers, take apart yeah. and take a look at. Then I'd go into the next classroom, right? And there weren't enough chairs for the Marines, so they had to sit on MRE cartons. And we were in the shower room, okay? I won't tell you which Marine the, the division uh, uh, treated us to that wonderful thing. So people were coming out from taking a dump and taking a shower, and we were all huddled around this, this uh, dry erase board trying to do the class. Yet in the other room, that was the IED room, and we couldn't go in there. There was one of every type of Italian landmine, and you could pick it up and take it apart and do it. Dude, this is my argument. If you were already seeing those components, you were too close. And likely yeah. the next thing was, boom, all the air was sucked out of the room. So, so the point is, training is the argument. Training is what did the agency hold as being important? But then there's a clever balance. It's a seesaw. And this is where I want to attack you on this. Okay, so I'm on a high-speed pursuit. The vehicle is similar to one where there was a homicide at a domestic scene on Christmas. What do you know about Christmas, Brian? Oh, Christmas yeah. well, elevated the, tensions yep. all the way yeah, around, right? Absolutely. So, so, so now that part of it, uh, I think, goes against Nick. And 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 thank you, Nick, for your service. I'm sorry you were shot. This is a horrible situation. But all of the things there elevate this to something different. So my question to you, Brian, is the other side of it is what would Nick have been negligent if he said, screw it? Uh, right. it I'm the and, only one on the road and my backup is too far away because that's what I would have done. You know me. I would have called back. I would have got my binos. I wouldn't have gone down a, a gosh damn dead end road. And I would have called it in until they woke somebody up and I had a cover car. And I had to do those kind of things before, Brian. You see what I'm saying? I mean, he should have exercised his right to vacate himself from that situation, at least temporarily. And, <sighs> but but what is but that goes right back to the training. Uh, yeah. Was he is he is he trained was he to do that? Was trained to, was he trained no. to that in that situation right. to call that in? Right. Because the other side of like you said is. If he had done that and said, you know what, I'm going to hold off. This guy's obviously killed a couple people. I'm, I'm, we're in a, it's one on one. No one, yep. you don't want to be in a fair fight. That's the dumbest thing ever, right? <laughs> you want overwhelming but, but let's odds. Say, yeah, but, yeah. But let's the, say, the, let's say we didn't let know him, that. What if he let him go? Yeah. Or yeah. didn't lead him, let, let him go. But, but, you know, he had continued, he backed off the pursuit and then not got away, but, injured or killed another human being you know yeah. what i'm saying is then so easy then i agree on. i agree but i'm trying to say let's look we've done this before so let's you and i play a version of devil's advocate it, it's hard because you're you're advocating for the devil all the time you bastard <laughs> but but the idea is let's say okay it's christmas and we've got this pursuit uh uh, uh you know this guy chose a dead end there's an argument to be made maybe it's a dui maybe he's not from this area maybe it's a stolen car maybe it's kids whatever else but the idea that when you go alone into a situation like that and you only have dispatch and dispatch is saying, listen, your cover cars are a long way away. You as the road copper have to think, one, what's best for society? What's best for me? And what's best for the suspect, right? I mean, so, so my thing to the, to the, the uh, argument that the training uh, failed, I would agree with. But I would say that, that what part of the training are we suing for? Because clearly, when you when you have a vicarious suit like this one was, and it was the hospital, and it was dispatch, yeah. and it was the supervisor, Everyone. it was everybody else, what is that? That feels deep pockets to me. And deep pockets is that, hey, listen, I'm still in pain. 
and I've got a lot of medical stuff to pay for, yeah. and it's going to take me thirty million, you know, to get out of it. So I'm going to sue everybody. As a matter of fact, I'm going to sue the news media that showed up because they characterized it as the wrong type of thing. You see where I'm going? So what is it that we're saying? If we're saying that that officers have to have more discretion on the road, and we'll support that discretion specifically to stop incidents like this, I would be in support of that. So is that a function of training? You, you get my well, point. Well, I and. I get your point because of how this case, you know, how, played out, meaning he, like you just said, he sued saying, you know, the dispatch didn't tell me, you know, uh, I wasn't, you know, trained for the, or, you know, he said dispatch didn't tell me the hospital of this, this was all wrong. He didn't say, you know, I wasn't provided with a level of proficient training for the situation um, because that would have opened up to an argument to where the department would have said, well, yes, here's all of your training records and yes. here's the different training scenarios you've gone through. And here's this. So, so he didn't do it on the fact that like, you know what, I've, I didn't, I've had no idea what to do in this situation where I'm chasing a armed suspect and he's shooting at me. Um, they can go back and then say, well, here's all of the different training uh, uh, scenarios you've been through. Here's the different training programs. Here's what they demonstrate. Here's the different, you know, here's your whole record on how you did, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so they would then be able to say, well, no, we did. I mean, there's, cause there's no way they, they don't have to train you for every single potential oh, situation. Impossible. That's impossible. I, I agree. I right. So, agree. so you just have to train you to a standard. And if that right. standard is in keeping with, uh, uh, like a national standard, it's not like right. he, federal, he, uh, state, local, he, I agree. He couldn't Again. go back and say, no, this is negligent on your part because you've trimmed the training budget so much. We only get, you know, our six rounds to qualify. Like it's not something that's so far below any national standard or below any uh, neighboring area. Right. They, that's what they, he, he could have tried to show, but he, but he didn't, which means that it, cause it likely didn't exist. Right. Otherwise the I attorney think... would have, would have sued for that. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I, I see what you're saying is, is for what he's going after. It does seem like I, I you know, I, he's dealing with a horrible situation and he was nearly killed. It's a horrible situation. He was shot 12 times. His life will never be the same, but Brian, let me throw this at you. Okay. It's Christmas Eve or Christmas night, the morning too. You know how that that's hard to, to explain, or it's actually Christmas day. It doesn't matter, but it's a holiday that a lot of people, uh, uh, by the way, uh, Rosh Hashanah, happy uh, new year to all our, our Jewish uh, viewers and listeners. But, but Brian, this is as big, you, this is a big thing. So yes. Let's say that it's uh, uh, hours of darkness. He's still working alone as a state trooper and he makes a traffic stop because most state trooper uh, organizations uh, in Michigan is different. They do criminal investigations and narcotics and stuff. But many times when you see a state trooper, uh, they do nothing but enforce the roads and do accidents, right? And speeding. So yeah. let's say that he makes a traffic stop late at night. And as he walks up, it, 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 it's James Tilka. And Tilka guns him down 12 times. Uh, Tilka goes off, gets shot by other cops. And now here we have uh, 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 Nick at the side of the road. He's shot and he lives. He had no idea there was a domestic. He had no idea the vehicle didn't flee. It pulled over for him. It's an ambush attack. We have a totally different circumstance here. Now yeah. we're going to say, hey, did dispatch know this guy was fleeing from a domestic? Was, was dispatch onto it that, hey, wait a minute, you're pulling over a white car with a white male? Which Do you see what I'm trying to say? The detail, the robustness of a bolo, those type of things come into play here. I don't see it here. I see that from the very beginning, he thought, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, Oregon State Trooper thought, I have the suspect from that fatal shooting. I think he knew it right up, up, up at the beginning, Brian. And I think we don't train to a standard that, listen, if you're outgunned, don't go. Where, where do we get that? You know, I, I remember an argument with a, with a colonel that used to be a chief of staff for somebody famous. And it was like, hey, listen, you know, the house from hell, that was the big thing that was going on because it had just occurred. And he got up in my face and wanted a fist fight because you never leave anybody on a, on a battlefield. Yeah, that doesn't mean I, I can't wait five minutes and get a cover car and, you know, use a body bunker or something to retrieve a, a, a deceased right. person. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So my question here is, okay, I know Nick is in pain. And again, I wanted to use him for resilience because he lived through this yeah. and he's still a wonderful uh, uh, guy. That Let's not shit on somebody because they sue you because of your fence, right? But right. at the same token, gosh damn, clarify your message. What is it that you want us to change from, uh, uh, it was 2016, it's mm -hmm. now 2021. They just now recently, very recently, were the ones that came in and said, now we're going to dismiss this part of the suit. So, Brian, lawsuits take a long time. It takes a while, yeah. He's still in pain. Nick, what do you want to pass on to the other coppers? 
What do you want your legacy to be? Do you get my point? That's what I would, I would challenge them for, you know, is if it's training, what piece of the training was missing? What have you learned since then? That well, we can tighten up and th fix? this is part of the overall discussion of responsibility and liability, okay. right? Um, because that's what you're saying is, is okay. Well, you know, you, cause you, you said it a couple of times in terms of the, you know, you chose the profession knew or should yep. have known. These are all things that are, that these are known risks as a police officer, anyone who's not even a police officer will tell you that that's a dangerous job or you're likely to get shot or in a car accident or all of these. I mean, just, that's just general knowledge. It's not like this is, Oh, I had no idea this would happen. So um, I, I get, I get that point. Um, I think my, you, you're, you, I, I see what you're saying with what he's doing. What is he trying to accomplish with the lawsuit? And, and that should be taken into account, you know, with every lawsuit, you see what is the intent behind this suit? What Precisely. are you trying to do? What, what was he trying to do? And is he trying to, you know, because he's in pain, lash out and say, hey, you should have been there for me and you weren't in this and I was out there alone kind of, I mean, I, I see what you're saying. It gets more of the feel for that where he's just sort of trying to pass the responsibility on everyone it's a horrible situation. And it it's a, one thing that like, you know, it's almost unlikely to ever occur, right in, in your career, but but it did happen to him. Um, he's lucky to be alive, frankly, because of the situation. And, and so now what what should come of it? And I get it, he doesn't really have anything in terms to say I wasn't trained for this. Um, but he certainly seems to have not been prepared to handle, you know, everything that comes after. So I could see, you know, that being a, you didn't train me to deal with this situation, or I have, I don't have the right, uh, every, I haven't been taken care of since this accident. I could see if it there's was a suit. There's right. A suit. So, so yep. if it's, if there's the something standard of care, right, right, right. If, if I, if I sacrificed this, this happened and now you're no, you're not taking care exactly. of me appropriately. That's, that's different. Um, but th this, the, the reason I took interest too, in the case is, you know, does a police officer have, um, are there situations or, or is there, there, do they have the right in some cases to say, no, you did not properly prepare me for this. You as a department and an agency are liable. Um, I'm not completely liable for my actions because I was unprepared. This is what everything that occurred from that. And it's not, I'm not at fault because I was not properly trained for that situation. Is that uh, in general, can that be applied somewhere? And I'm kind of asking you that because. And you, right. And, and you know that the answer is, is yes. Right. But it's also a slippery slope because if you go in and you are going to sue your agency for failure to train. Okay. Because there, there's a whole bunch of, there's neglect, there, mm -hmm. there's, uh, 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 you know, uh, 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 hiring a person that you know, or should know is going to be dangerous. These are all laws that are already on the book. Yes. And, 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 and I like to go to my good friend, Brian Marin, that says, we don't need a new law. We need to yeah. go backwards to take a look at something like uh, U.S. code, you know, uh, Title 42 capers, uh, negligent training, negligent retention. That's yeah. where most of these, these lawsuits come from. On that standard, it's also the kiss of death. You'll never be a cop again. I, I mean, you can say what you want, uh, uh, but uh, Aaron Brockovich, uh, what did you do after that movie? You get what I'm trying to say? So yeah, you, you're great because you, you called somebody out, but you know, and I know that that's not a way Americans don't like that. They like it at the moment. You're a hero. You're the underdog. And then after a while, they go, hey, wait a minute, right? Here, my question is, is very simple. Look, we, we had uh, uh, things called unions, and I am not going to bash unions because the uh, guys will show up at my house, yeah? Uh, 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 because I was a member of union and yeah. FOP is strong. And there's other unions that we were members of. The idea was that there were people that were put into training that were by seniority able to take those jobs, but they were not qualified for the position they were in. And Brian, when you're dealing with something like, uh, how many ratchets are on a standard pair of Hyatt handcuffs and you can't answer that. And you're the handcuffing instructor. What's a pre battery weight of a 20, uh, uh, XL, uh, uh, streamlight flashlight. And you can't answer that. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Uh, uh, what, what's the maximum effective range of the, you know, nine millimeter handgun that you're carrying on your hip today? And you're sitting there going, no comment. And the attorney's leaning over like that. Brian, well, we have, we have a lot of coppers that are going out there with a minimum amount of regulatory training. Yes. Federal, right. Local state or state and local. Uh, uh, but this is a one-off situation. How many, tra how many traffic stops has this state trooper made uh, that had nothing Okay, boom, there's a column. How, I mean, meaning nothing uh, egregious occurred, nothing anomalous occurred. How many uh, uh, traffic stops 
had this trooper made where the person fled? How many of those fleeing ended up in that person shooting? You can see the chart, right? Okay. Yeah. So the chart is that the agency is not going to spend a lot of money on spirals that aren't likely to occur. Right. Okay. And so even though uh, uh, Marines were coming back in body bags because of IEDs, the balance was still there. Yeah, but we got a lot of guys in country. And you're going to go, nobody would ever say that. Yeah, they would say that, Brian. Yeah. Because what we're talking about is not a zero-sum game. We're talking about training costs money, recertification, getting experts in there. You get So my, my question here, again, is how come you, we can hire somebody as a subject matter expert on use of force to come in for the defense? But, but here we don't have a subject matter expert coming from Nick Cedarberg defense and saying, listen, this was mishandled. These people, and, and like dispatch, what did you, dispatch know? When did they know? And did they transmit it out? Ryan, I heard some tapes. I went online, went back. Well, that, that's, tapes. Sounded like Nick knew. Yeah, Sounded that, like he that's knew what that I this mean. was there, the guy, and that the guy that, was likely armed. That This is why the case likely got thrown out, right? Because I, I, all that stuff is on record. So if you try to go, I mean, there's there's no, there, the recordings there, the transcripts yes. there, you can tell, you know, what, that there, that's, it, it doesn't fit. Again, with horrible. It doesn't, it does, it, he, he's a great guy. You know what I'm saying? I, I definitely would love to have him come on the show and tell us his thought process, because my thing to you, Brian, is I am constantly dis de-escalating. And, you know, our principal policy here is always be considering de-escalation. And de-escalation at this point is this guy wants to kill himself and he's not afraid to kill you, too. So sometimes we need to corral them in and get somebody but, else. Because but where I think, does it say that you'll trade off your no, life no, for it, the suspect? The, and the, but this is going to my point of of, well, well, everything you're talking about is a product of training, training yes. that this guy likely did not have. So meaning just exactly what you're saying is that did he, was he given the tools, the skills, the attitudes, aptitudes, ability, the knowledge of, of how to, how to do that, how to take yes. that, that, that use critical thinking in the moment, advanced critical thinking to say, the juice isn't worth the squeeze right now. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and let up a little bit on this guy and wait for a cover car, wait for someone to come in or, or buy, get some uh, other operational choice, operational yep. layer in there to say, what other support assets do we have available? This does this need to end right now? Or, right. I mean, there's, there's What's all the difference these... between that and the bank you were uh, bringing up the, yeah. the, the, the bank robbery, the bank the robbery. Same thing. Yeah. they knew at some point that the intent of these guys was you're going to have to kill us because we're leaving. Yeah, we're, we're not. You know what yeah, I'm trying to say? Yeah. We've got these weapons and we're not going to give up. So I would look at it closely and somebody might be a suspect when I bring that up. But Brian, I think it's the same case. I think it's the same case that a couple of those coppers were out of their league and should have known we've got to get out of here and call. And they ultimately did. And it ultimately resolved itself because you got a bunch of coppers there and they were much more experienced perhaps in this type of, in this type of situation. And meaning many more bank robberies in LA, you get what I'm trying to say that involves shootings than perhaps uh, Oregon uh, state uh, patrol troopers getting shot on, on a pursuit after at the termination point of pursuit. You get what I mean? I'm back at that balance again. Yeah. Yeah. But, but and I, I get the, I get that. And, and that's, that's the whole thing that we're, we're talking about is, is, you know, it goes back to that. Uh, we, we tie everything to training, but it does, does he have a leg to stand on to say, well, no, I wasn't, it's not what he brought up in the suit. Right. But, yep. but would there be something there? What meaning no, who's, who's liable yeah. for it? Is it, is it on the agency? Is it on the department to, to be able to say, Hey, we need to equip you with decision-making capability. Precisely. Well, let well, me we'll, apologize but, but, because but my point was that my yeah. point was that there's no critical decision training here. Okay. Because if it was, it would have been evident. It, 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 exactly okay. it, it did not show right and and that's what we're talking about is so so could he then say well you know what you weren't you didn't give me the the decision making training that i need because that's really what all we're talking about is i know, think that lawsuit would have went i think that lawsuit would have went forward further than this lawsuit went because he would have said listen i'm not thinking clearly dispatch knew i wasn't thinking clearly dispatch sort of said hey listen if you're not thinking clearly maybe you need to back up do you get what i'm trying to say that would have been operational layer Okay, what's a supervisory layer? Because at the tactical level, level this apparently failed. Uh, uh, thank God he lived through it. Yes. And, and my, my thing is, let's use this as a springboard so some other copper doesn't have to get in this trick bag, Brian. You, you see where I'm going? And, and, and I think that the, the communication training, uh, we, we do police training all the time, you and I. And how many times is a dispatcher in a room? And yeah, what do right. we beg for every time? Right. Right. We beg them, bring your dispatchers, bring your emergency uh, room personnel, bring your paramedics that are going to be on the street. Why? Because every lawsuit that I've been involved in where I had to come in and testify, all those people are sued. 
all those people have to testify. So why don't you bring them into training in the first place? But the, and, and this goes to my, um, my, I guess, what, the big, big picture idea of how these things should work. And, and it's not just with police work, it's with your, your, you know, whatever company you, you have with whatever yes. it is that you do, right? Um, is that the, it, we, we kind of take this backwards approach to it and it goes, let's give them the, the, you know, the least amount of training necessary to get the job done is how we're looking at it. I mean, realistically, it's, it's that that's, that's how it's been done. Um, I don't, my thing is, I don't think we've taken a real serious, well, other than police officers who are demanding more or asking for more training, society has it. not t- taken, taken a, a larger, uh, uh, you know, look at how we, what we how we look at policing and police training and all that stuff i i mean i know police officers have been the only ones saying like hey well we've been trying to professionalize it right through throughout their careers have been trying to ask for more and standardize stuff and do this but i i think you know the the idea is we're, we're not we're doing the the bare minimum here rather doing i'm going to give you everything yeah i'm going to give you the best training in the world i'm going to give you the best support in the world i'm going to give you everything we possibly can um that way you're more likely to always make the right decision at the right time for the right reason and if you make yes. it for other thing other than the right reason if you if you now have your thumb on the scale because you're doing something that you're not supposed to be doing, it's going to be so blatantly obvious i can get rid of you right away you've demonstrated and, intent yeah, you've it, chosen it, that, off the menu yeah that's what i'm saying it, instead it turns into this um well, we just start suing. Everyone starts suing. A- everyone. And, but and that so drives the training. You just created a Mobius loop, right? right? Because you said liability. So are we trying to reduce or manage or lessen liability? Use in, insert any word there of the agency against the copper. Are we trying to proactively defend against likely lawsuits by having this minimum standard of training? The answer is yes. And that's what I'm saying is this is wrong. That's the wrong direction to go because you get, uh, uh, for example, shooting training, you have to train in low light, no light, and you got to train daytime and nighttime. Why? Because there's so many more liability capers from you shooting, right? right? Okay. Now you drive every minute of every day as a copper, you're always out there driving something and you do your emergency vehicle operation at the yeah. academy and you graduate. And guess when you go back, Brian, when you hit if a parked car, up. yeah, <laughs> you got to go back to charm school. What? Yeah. You got to go back for some. So, so the idea, what I'm saying is, couldn't we turn that on its end and say that what we'd like to do, that we'd like to reduce the danger in these situations, and in so doing, you would lessen the, the vicarious liability and, and the, the actual proximate uh, cause of most of these cases. I, I can only do what I can foresee. So if you don't give me decision-making training, how am I going to spiral this out and think forward and think sideways? to who I've got at the scene and what I'm about to do. Do you get what I'm saying? And then the argument's going to be that it, it, it's uh, solved in nanosecond. Then guess what? We have to slow time down. If we can't physically slow time down, that's, we, we're getting into a, a, a nebulous area. That that's we're never a common um, misconception that everyone has just accepted is that's the fact that these things happen in nanoseconds. Not, there's, yes. there's nothing in the world that happens in nanoseconds. No, I don't, nobody I don't, comes I mean, out of nowhere. There's nobody no such thing out coming out of nowhere. Like it, that doesn't exist. It's it, it, Maybe you didn't observe it. You didn't see it. You didn't sense it, whatever. But yep. nothing comes out of nowhere. So when we boil... And that's, that's, you know, getting into what we would call, yeah, that decision-making training, right? How, how do I operationalize this information and make the right decision of everything that I know uh, when you, when you boil it down, when everyone out there is boiling it down, it's like, well, you only have, you know, a split second, then, then what, this then is what you get. Close, it's buddy. not binary. It is exactly. not binary. It but, doesn't but, have to be that way. Well, it will be if you force the situation to be binary by thinking that everything comes down to nanoseconds. Um, yeah, yeah, but, but I, just you know a, let's think of the first two things of this case. It's on Christmas. Yeah. And it's a domestic. Yeah. What do you immediately know? What's your oh, brain I'm, doing I'm, already? I'm already like, then this is everybody. Worst, worst case scenario. You know? um, a and domestic. you're saying, well, we can't be that way. You're, 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 listen, uh, 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 Tilkin is the only one in this case that apparently knew what he was doing. Went out, got his gun, got all the other stuff, set up all the situation. So family missed it. Wife missed it. Everybody said uh, uh, she's dead. 11 month old daughter in the driveway going, oh my gosh, what the hell is going on? Okay. But my thing is it doesn't have to happen that way because if we just take a look at the combat rule of threes, you get what I'm trying to say? We said, think of the situation. It's late at night. I've got this unknown call that's anomalous, but it's not anomalous for a domestic. And every time I've seen a domestic like this on this type of night, guess what? When the guys fled from a shooting, it's going to end poorly. You know, how many of you seen where the guy goes, okay, time out. 
You know, the, this was a, 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 a potential family annihilator scenario. And, and the guy decided he, he did the one person that gave him the most grief. He shot his uh, 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 soon to be estranged wife. And then he left to do what? To kill himself. But was he going to go kill himself, Brian? Or was he fishing? Do you get what I'm trying to say for the next victim? That's, that's what I'm trying to say. If we're not playing those games in training, what are we doing? What's training all about? Hey, he's got a gun, shoot him, and this guy doesn't? Well, the, the, you just brought in um, a, a lot of, you added a lot of context, right? Because what happens is in those type of scenarios or training for that, it's you, you, all of those extra things have to be taken into account, right? I mean, like right away, you know, okay, it's, it's late and a domestic on Christmas is very different than a domestic after a, you know, your, uh, the, the Raiders lose a football game. Okay. Those are two, two different things. You know what I mean? I like, get you. You, you, but, you know what I'm saying? But, but listen, but, firearms training simulator is yeah. a fat system and yeah. it has firearms in there. It doesn't have strategic thinking or critical thinking. The second one is it's called a shoot. Don't shoot scenario. There's, <laughs> you, 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 you can't get more binary than that, Brian. Right. You know what I'm trying to say, uh, I'm saying that, that you don't have to be on a felony stop on a airport runway somewhere with simunition to talk through what we're talking through right now and seeing if there were options and, and why weren't those options uh, available to the officer at that time and at that place. Yeah. Um, and, and that's, that goes into uh, uh, creating those options and, and then making those decisions obviously are, are what, what we're talking about here in, in all of these cases. It's that, that, it, you know, in the moment, advanced critical thinking to, figure out what the likely outcomes are determine the probability of each one and then and then execute on those right that's that's what that's what boyd was talking about with a ooda loop then you continue to update that as you go along um but it's but, not forcing the situation it's it's playing the you know let, let's 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 take a larger look at, at overall what we're trying to do here and not not lose the forest with the trees here i i i think you're exactly right but i think we're missing a key point here if you are going to create the fastest race car on the face of the planet, there's trial and error. If you are going to make the best omelet at a French restaurant in mm. gosh damn Paris, it, it's, you know, people getting together and go, oh my God, voila, this guy's got it with the, you know, adding the lemon uh, uh, bark to the whatever. Uh, if we we're trying to, to get the, you know, case for pasteurization, it's trial and error. The only thing we don't do that on is training. We wait till it's the worst possible case. You get what I'm trying to say? And people are laying dead and shit scattered everywhere. That's not how you do a scientific move forward. I'm just saying that the pendulous swing of police training, and, and we just keep plugging our finger in the dike and saying, let's see what happens next. And, oh, we'll, we'll add this then. That, that uh, Frankensteinian way of approaching critical thinking training in police work is what I'm afraid of. Why is it so hard to get people to... Um understand um what you're saying with all this and i'm not trying to say like oh you're dumb you don't get it i, I would actually say the, the exact opposite is true as, as long as you have a little bit of experience it should seem yes. you know um easier to see it as uh, uh is this is this is all about decision making i, I don't i can't think of now, it, it, it's decision making sometimes under stress or potentially yes. stressful situations or situations that can escalate to very stressful or dangerous situations very quickly. So, so, but, but, you know, all the, the science and the study and the research is all done and all clear on that and what, what you can and cannot do and what a human can process and can't. So it's not like there's, there's something new to learn in these situations. So why have we not focused on how to make a, a good decision? Why, why is it, how come we haven't as, as a whole, there haven't been more people that go, you know what we need to focus on right here, not about what weapon system to employ or standoff distance or time and the, you know, a coefficient of friction on, on the tires at that turn. You know, why do we do all that? But we can't say because there's a lot of research and study by the big brain folks about decision making of and, and yep. information science and decision science. And it's super, super, super complex. And they realize the complexity. Now, none of those big PhD, big brain folks can can do it in a sense, right? Uh, uh, but but why haven't it, why haven't we approached it like that? I mean, I'm just maybe curious. you've maybe you've shined a, a light. And by the way, brilliant uh, question and and well taken. 
and we're not going to. It's not a yeah. To that answer, not expecting today. you to you give see me what I'm saying. Give me a but three I, word answer tell, to that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I will tell you this. I think you've shined light on something. All my career, and 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 Brian, I've been involved with cop work now almost all of my life, right? In one way, mm-hmm. shape, or form. Yeah, in some and, way. And yeah. We're we're talking uh, the real thin blue line. People say the thin blue line is that cops will lie for other cops, and you know they'll go to prison without out in a cop. Brian, I've seen criminals <laughs> on duty, and I've seen them off duty. Yeah. I've seen them work at the library in a Seven Eleven and cop work. Yeah. I've never seen this horse shit thin blue line. Maybe some agencies got it, and if you do, cut it out. It's a cancer. It's got to go. But the idea is that the thin blue line that we know all it is that we think we need to know, because we've got less than lethal and we've got the San Diego model of the field training officer, and we've got these trainers that are certified and I've got a certificate for attending training. Brian, that all feeds into the problem. The problem is that right now I can get a diploma mill that makes me yeah. a doctor. It doesn't make me an inch smarter, but mm. we both know that, that the idea is that the smarter you are, the better decisions you'll make and the less force you'll utilize coming to that decision, May, you know, falling, a, a find, finding that decision. And, and the idea is we can't keep invoking shit like Boyd and, and all of these things. I said Occam's razor at the beginning, when people really don't understand what that means. There are police chiefs that are chiefs of police because they're incredible politicians. There are yeah. very few police chiefs that are police chiefs because they're incredible coppers. Think of that for a minute. Okay. Now, right. right there, I just turned off a lot of people, but that's yeah. my opinion. That has nothing to do with the training. The idea is that sometimes you get to a level that you forget how you got there and you forget what's important. Why? Because it's a balancing act. It's a balancing act with finance, with budget. I'm trying to, I didn't say that that copper wasn't trying to be the best. Okay. I'm saying that he was a politician. He was very good at financial matters. He might not be the best road cop, but do we want the chief of police and the sheriff to be the best cop? Now we want those guys, those road guys that are out there. If you need to get there from here, you can't just do firearms training and driving training and, you know, stop the bleed. You gotta, you gotta think, you gotta outthink a cunning opponent. That's what this is about. That's what's going to take back Afghanistan. That's what's going to uh, uh, put ISIL and ISIS and, you know, the Lambda variant of, uh, uh, you know, Abu uh, Sayyaf back, back in their corner, Brian. We got to outthink them because we can't outfight them. And now they've got all their tactics and we've given them our guns and we've given them night vision. So that's the same thing with this copper on this night. He didn't outthink the shooter and Tilka almost killed him for it. And, and that's a hard, that's hard math. So my answer to you, it's, it's hard when somebody shows that you're fat and you're ugly and you're out of shape, you know what I'm saying? And we don't like it. That, that's what's happening. And that's what happens in this case. In these cases, when we find out that we weren't the Superman that somebody told us we were, it's right. hard as shit, man. I really mean that. I feel that. I feel for these coppers in these situations. Boy. But we've got to get better at training that copper. And the academy is about rote memorization and about skill building. It has nothing to do with decision making. Would you, would you say that because some of that training in terms of like, let's say, firearms and tactical type training like that um would you say that because police officers become more proficient in that that it almost allows these situations to continue because they're going to continue to take that option and when it wins and the bad guy dies who just killed his family yay you know that we're, we're okay with that as a society right he's a bad person he killed a bunch of people try to shoot out the police and then they killed him you know it, it does that does that end up adding to these you, you get what i'm saying meaning so i'm going to uh, be a corollary I, and i think you're like, right like, again and, and again we're not out there trying to piss off the coppers administration we're trying to shine a light into those dark areas that nobody wants to talk about when i was a copper on the road brian and i'm talking uniform and i was out there with my badge and my gun every single thing that i had on my belt was to hurt you in one way shape or form right it was nothing that was on my belt to heal you you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And, and as a matter of fact, I had rubber gloves so I wouldn't gum up my, you know, uh, uh, hands and get uh, hep C or something when I was punching you with my sap gloves or hitting you with my flashlight. And Brian, it was the Wild West and there was rough and tumble and you had to fight them because bad guys were bad guys and coppers were coppers. We're not there anymore. We're in a new breed. And you're saying, well, some places are still the Wild West. First of all, let's cut that analogy and let's say that yes, and those places will take a special kind of officer with a special kind of training to go in and solve those problems. But the average officer on the street can go his entire career or her entire career 
and just be one step ahead of the, of the bad guy using critical thinking, using de-escalation techniques and never have to get into those situations. I, I'm saying that, that that's where we have to start the epicenter now. We don't. We, we don't. We start at an extreme and try to work towards the center. How the hell are we going to get there? I, I just don't see that. And I, I think that uh, uh, colleges and universities and, and uh, training and education, if we want the cop that you keep talking about, this cop that can think themselves uh, uh, well, him or herself out that's... of the situation, are, are, is that really what, what the rest of the nation wants? I, I mean, I want that. Yeah, but then that often gets confused, Greg, is we need to it, it oh and it's the same answer everywhere we got to hire better people it's like what better people there are no better people out there's no, no better person it's about training and experience and and education like those are what make and you taking that first step you're a marine because but, you went to the yellow boot prints well, brian you you can't just pick a guy and say he'd be a person perfect person for a marine no but that's what you know? that's what that's what people keep doing and that's what you see i agree you know big stuff with like you know trait theory and all that stuff oh we need this person that has all this like dude you know how many guys that I knew in the Marine Corps that like, you know, they were like in front of a judge and they were a chud yeah. on the street. And it was, I was like, well, you can go to the Marine Corps and straighten out your life. And they're like, okay. And they're like, this is the greatest thing. And they became some of the best Marines and yes. the best leaders and the best, like if you would have done your whatever screening on that person, they would have been like, keep this person far away from, from, from yeah. us. Right. Yeah. But, but they turn out to be the best. So I, I don't like this uh, a method of oh well you know we gotta it's better people so it's just no people are fucking people man there's no exactly. better people it's and we're we're, <laughs> we're one step away from animals the, we're vicious you the, get well, what I'm saying well the 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 the, the, the te you know the past the test for that is did yeah. they vol they they voluntarily That's said I'm point. going to do this I'm willing yep. to put myself in harm's way for my community for my country whatever that is or I'm and it doesn't even whether it's police work or not, or fire or nurse or whatever it is you chose to do in life, or like when you're choosing that role like that, you likely already have everything you need, right? I think you're you, right. You, you have it on board. Now, do you need more training and education experience? Well, yeah, absolutely. It's a continuous process. And, and we can, that's the part we should focus on this idea. And, and now you can make it more competitive by increasing pay or benefits and all that stuff, which is always good because it just, it makes you know, that competition for those really prestigious jobs are going to get fierce and you're going to get really good people that really want it are going to work hard. So I understand all that, but, but, you know, we, I think we focus sometimes on, you know, the individual It's just interesting. Uh, I, I was reading something that someone wrote, wrote about this author and all about them and, you know, how at the university, it should be why, you know, this person should be included more and that person shouldn't be included and I sat there reading through it and I was like, I was just thinking like, I've never really given a shit about some of the authors that I've read. We're really interested in what they have to say if it's good. Yeah. I'm really interested in what their work shows or the ideas they have, but like, why do we care about them? Like, I don't care about Malcolm Gladwell. The people he talks about are fucking incredible or the, right. the, the stories are that that's where it is. But what do we do? We get obsessed with the the person and who is this person that's going to lead us? Well, there, there is no one. It's like, what, 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 why are we do? Why do we do that? And I, and I know why it's just, you we're, we're as humans, we're, we're obsessed with others because we're obsessed with ourselves and there's a constant comparison going on, that's but it. that's what, why social media is so successful. But I, I, the, the idea is just, we, I think we need to stop focusing on that and just focusing on what, what are the KSAs? What are the objectives? What do we want? What, what, what That's does it where like? training has to go back. And Brian, for every single time that you watch uh, uh, somebody come on and say, that's my daughter or son, they're incapable of this crime. But we all know that they yeah. perpetrated the crime. Right. Or somebody saying that this person couldn't kill another human being. Shut up. You're wrong. Absolutely every one of you has the capacity to, to torture and murder and maim. Mm -hmm. You just mm -hmm. choose not to in yes. this, in this guise, in this, who you are at this moment, but you change the situation. Okay. And, and I can get you to murder. I mean, that, yeah. that's the idea that, that we don't want to play that game. We want to go the op we want to go the opposite direction and say, you can train your way out of this. You really can but the training isn't going to be just selection process, which everybody's going to now. And you saw the last uh, 10 RFPs are give us a better selection process. Oh, okay. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. But how about it, once those so, people are going somewhere, it's a training process. That, that's that the idea is, is you're like, okay, so 
you're expecting this person to have these qualities already when they get there. Yes. Well, guess what? Your pay is not commensurate with that. Like, it's just not. It, 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 this is Unless entry... you got doctor or PhD well, or something. Or well, that, that, that's what I mean. It's like, if th this is your entry level or whatever level position, and you want them to already show up and have yep. all of these traits and all of these, uh, you know, well, I'm sorry, that's not like you, you why don't you just train them to have those? <laughs> like, why that's don't you just exactly train what right. you want? <laughs> but, but the idea, Brian, is doesn't it look so much more above board that we say, this is our criterion. This is how we're going to hire. Look at this panel of experts that we're going to bring in. And you know what? One is going to be great. And one is going to be a murder. And one is going to be on a pad. And one yeah. is going to get pregnant and quit. And one, okay, that because we're humans. Yeah. So stop looking for the perfect human and build a better human. Take the ones that you have right now and invest in them. If you spend a little bit of time and a little bit of money investing in the capital that you already have, the human capital that you have, and, and somebody's saying, well, you, you, you're never going to be able to bend or manipulate this or that with training. Yes, you are. And you're also going to be able to find out the Brian quotient is what I'm going to call it now, where I've laid everything else out in front of you. I've given you all the training. I've ex exasperated uh, 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 myself by telling you this is what the standard is. And now if you choose off the menu, it's on you. Yeah. And guess what? You're gone. That's where we need to be. And not enough agencies are there. I'm tired of, of people thinking that I'm bashing cops. I love cops. I love soldiers. I, I love people that work at Tyson Chicken. The yeah, idea is it's... that there's good people and bad people. And the only way to weed them out, Brian, is to have your standards high, maintain those standards, right? And have a, a good, consistent training that's ongoing. It doesn't end at basic training. Yeah. If, you're, if your policies, procedures, if your process isn't, isn't up to par, isn't getting what you're, what you're, what you're wanting out of it. That's the problem. It's, it's rarely ever the person who's at completely, who's at fault for this stuff. I mean, th yeah. those, those ones are usually small and they're obvious, right? They're, they're, um, you know, you, you can tell that they're so far out of what they're right, supposed everybody to be goes, doing. You're exactly and it's right. so egregious that it's easy it, to spot exactly. and you can quash it right away. You know what I mean? Those are the cases where it's like that this is so obvious because how did this happen? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then it's on that. Then you, you realize it's on that person. Most of these things, man, you're just, you're, you're, you're a product of whatever that process and training and education and experience you went through. I mean, that, that's what I used to But nature said. and nurture can work in the same environment. It doesn't have yeah. to be one or the other. Oh, yeah, yeah. You see what I'm trying to say? So, I, you know, the, 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 the question I kept getting in Combat Hunter, so what do you want? Do you want the country boy or do you want the city boy? And I would answer the same way every so time. City boy yeah. knows these yeah. skills. Country boy knows these. Knows these so if skills. you put both of those guys together and, and you have a yeah, – You can't. You're, you're never going to be able to overcome the yep. magic that happens. And, and there's a kid that didn't go to college and didn't get a degree and he's not a doctor, but you're listening to him on a podcast. And there's another guy that's a doctor and has written many things and you're falling asleep before you change the radio dial. Right. Yeah. So, so don't sit there and try to pigeonhole us into the skills, try to raise the standard of the KSAs to a level where you say that's attainable and that is good enough federally, uh, state and locally. Uh, for our cop. And then when I say good enough, I don't mean relying on it. I mean that it lessens the, 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 the uh, uh, liability by increasing the safety. That's what we're talking about. How yeah. can that be so hard? We're but, not talking about a thing, right? But we, we, yeah, well, we have odd ways we measure these different successes or failures. Like we, we pick, you know, what, what programs or what did this do in this domain over time? And what about arrest numbers or this? It's like, you know, that was a whole thing when people like during, especially during lockdown and everything like that. And you're, or all this pushback in different cities about a, you know, defund the police and let's not have them do this and let's not have them do that. And then people were like, see, the crime went down. It's like, no, 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 no. The crime didn't go down. Statistics the will statistics, show you whatever you want. The statistics went down because you told the police to stop arresting people. Exactly. Therefore, they, they found fewer guns. They took less drugs off the street. They did like all of these things you wanted before. Like, I mean, it's just a manipulation of, of yeah. numbers here is what you're looking at. It's just absolutely yeah. ridiculous. But, but I, 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 again, that goes into, because that became quantifiable. Well, you can count how many exactly. grams of I can dope hold it in up. my hand. Yeah. Can't I? I can show you, listen, Brian, when, when they found out that the NHL and people still bitching about this, but they went found out about NHL, certain injuries were more common than others. Then they said, okay, no more cross-checking. When yeah. they found that these right. it's were too hard to yeah. call and they caused uh, injury, they moved out the goal, right? Uh, in football, they changed. NFLs they changed did. a bunch of right. stuff. Okay, yeah. so what we're saying is that when you're at the top of your game, even the best in the business can take a knee 
and say, we need to take a look at this and revisit this. This is not for federal because when federal comes in and mandates it to the states, it's, now you got a freedom issue. But what yeah, I'm saying that, is what's best for all of us is a collegiate thing. This is where we have to have the brightest minds thinking, and that has to include the cops. What we're doing right now, Brian, and I'm telling you we're on the cusp of this, we're having a bunch of geniuses pushing policy down to the agencies. That's not going to work. And you can't have just coppers pushing the policies. Do you see what I'm trying right, to say? No, we I, have to sit together I, and we have to say that, in a clear light of day, this is what needs to be fixed. That's that's a good point because you you often have and and you know all of these sides are generally well intentioned, right? Most yes, people are saying are. Hey, we want to fix this, we want to fix that, right? And and that's also becomes an issue because I we've seen it before where someone has some really well intended policies or plans or things they want to do where and you can sit there and go wrong. this is going to go horribly wrong this is not going yeah. to work and then remember when you used to have to take a test to vote and somebody goes you know what <laughs> you know you a more educated voter that's a brilliant strategy how did that turn out <laughs> we're still fixing that shit brian i know i know and so so you can i mean the, the, that's that's what happens when you try to do these things at scale too it can it can get complicated because we're looking for very specific things i want this specific policy in this situation versus Again, I'm going to set you up for success the best way I can. We're going to give you the best training to make all of these decisions at any time, no matter what it is. And then you're, it's up to you. The responsibility is on you to make the right decision at the right time. But, but right. I, again, so, so let's go back to this, Nick, where we started, Brian. Let's yeah. go back to Nick Cedarberg. Nick, we're sorry for what happened to you. We're glad you lived your uh, uh, resilience epitomized. Uh, one, uh, folks, anybody that, that is in charge of Nick, pay him. Pay him good money so he never asked to hurt again because he took those bullets so we didn't have to. So 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 that James uh, uh, Tilka didn't kill a bunch of other people that night. So take care of your warriors. He was a warrior, and I hate using that term, Brian, but you know what I'm talking about. In this yeah. case, he was in the arena. We weren't. So one, take care of Nick. Two, don't let the message die when Nick's case gets thrown out of course. So let's make sure that the, the case of Nick Cedarberg never happens again. That this is how we should do this. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So we have a hot wash and after action review, and then we go in. Was a policy at fault? Was the training at fault? Zero in on that and fix it. Brian, if we did that, we would be more like the NHL or the NFL. We would incrementally change over time and be better at, at uh, uh, our training and better at our evaluation process and, and better at our academies. But are we doing that? What's going back? What, what, what's coming back from the front? Yeah. Um, and I know we, 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 we hammer at home all the time is that you can, all that stuff is, is good and great. The, the different, you know, whatever, whether it's a weapons thing or driving, all that stuff is you, you skills you need to learn. Good. Um, what we're not still having, you know, a lot of people don't realize is it's the application of those at the right time for the right reason. That's the difficult part. Like that anyone, I, you can teach anyone how to shoot a pistol really well. You really can. I mean, if they want to learn how to do it, they'll learn and you can teach someone how to do that. But, but when, when to actually, you know, pull the trigger on it and how to use it and how to implement yep. it, that that's like an afterthought. And, and yep. that needs to be the forethought before, you know what I'm saying? That, that, that's some the of the, idea. you're spot on again. And some of the best people, some of the best skydivers, some of the best whitewater guides, some of the best, uh, uh in all of those sports die at the top of their game. Yep. When you would look at it and go, wait a minute, they should have read this situation mm -hmm. and know, you know why Brian, because they were at the top of the game and they didn't have an oversight. They didn't have somebody walk in and go cool your jets turbo. You're about to walk into a shitty situation because you're not out thinking it anymore. You're just going with that groove in the I, record. You're, you're following. And, and I think, you know, that, that actually goes back to the, the Simone Biles case where, oh my God, where she did make the, she went, yep. no, I am about to, if I go, cause how it would have been easier for her to yep. just continue on doing what she'd been doing her whole entire life, go hit that competition. And she might've seriously, seriously injured herself. Yep. And she didn't, she chose, you know what? I'm out running my headlights. I'm, I, I I'm in over my head. I can't take it. I got to take a step What's back. The difference? And, and What's like, the difference? this is exactly what we're talking about here. I, I think. think you're right. I think you're exactly right. So, okay. Yeah. But well, guess what? There's still people divided over Simone Biles and they're going to be arguing about <laughs> it for four years. So the next Olympics. So we're not going to solve this today. And don't get us wrong, folks. We're behind all of those people that are behind you, making you safe, uh, yeah. uh, improving I, your livelihood. And I'm talking about safety checkers at, at the uh, uh, spam plant, Brian. I'm talking about anybody that has to I'm, think above and beyond themselves in their in their roles. I'm curious, as uh, for the people that bash Simone Biles, how many of them were the 
one of the greatest to ever play their sport and were in the middle of an Olympic competition. I yep. wonder how many who bashed her had that experience. I would say probably none. Maybe, uh, maybe I, there's I, one I, Olympic I think it's an medalist. amazing thing that you just uncovered that we are so much more likely to use rotten apples, yeah. right? Uh, and, and throw them at the crowd than to say, hey, here's my hand up, not a hand out. Yeah. Spot on. Okay. Well, um, I think that's probably a good place to, to wrap that conversation. No, I'm just sad. Thanks. Great podcast, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, 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 the light out angry. of the tunnel is that, that, you know, that we don't, th th these things are changeable. Like, I, I, and this train is train your saying. way out of this. Yes. Yeah. That's what I mean is that that's why I stop worrying about, oh, we got to find the right person, the right tool or the right. Yep. No, it, it's focus on, it's a focus on developing those people to the best of their ability, Absolutely. to the best of their potential to bring them, just raise the standard it, it is by, is by investing in those people. It's not, you know, it's not bashing or more lawsuits it, it, or, you're or so it, right. It, it, and you know what, if you're going to write on a policy and procedures manual, that this is going to be taken on a case by case basis, and you have the uh, ultimate authority to decide at this and that, then teach me and teach him, teach yeah. me what I should do. Yeah. That's, I think that I think our broadcast, this entire podcast, uh, uh, was show centered me. around that is, is show us that you want to fix this because yes, you can train your way out of it. Yes. You can write your way out of it. And this isn't about, uh, uh, creating a policy. So you can't sue me. It's about fixing the problem, fixing what's broke. Yeah, it's it's fixing the problem so that you yeah and and one of the good benefits of that is less lawsuits because they're not going to be required in there. So that, yeah. that's 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 an another positive, but not the focus of this, right? You can't have focus on how do we reduce. I mean, hey, let's do training that just allows us to reduce lawsuits. It's like, wait, wait, what? What? what the, that's not an outcome. You know, that's a yet, you, yet you we know? accept it every day. Yet we accept it every day. A check in the box training. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Hey, yeah. shout out to Nick, uh, Nick Suderberg. You're, you're a hero and you're resilient. And thank God that you were there that night. Uh, God only knows what it could have turned into. But let's use this yeah. example and move uh, forward. To move forward. Absolutely. All right. Well, um, I think that's that's a that's a good place to to wrap on for today. So now, we, we appreciate everyone for for tuning in. Don't forget to check out our Patreon account. We add stuff on there. We do our weekly recaps and uh some some behind the scenes stuff that we work on what we, we throw up there too, kind of the rough cuts so that you guys can check it out and it's value added for you so thanks everyone for there and thanks for tuning in don't forget that training changes behavior